DC's first issue special series was an anthology series, launched in the spring of 1975, featuring a vast array of different characters, some of whom who had already been established, like the Manhunter, Dr. Fate, the Creeper, and Monomorpho, while others such as Atlas and the Dingbats of Danger Street were created specifically for the series. Developed by publisher Carmine Infantino, the series was meant to profit on the popularity of first issues, as they appeared to sell better than later issues. However, the company wouldn't have to commit to ongoings for each title if the issue didn't sell well. In fact, of the 13 published issues, only two were actually successfully spun off in a separate series, Warlord and New Gods respectively. And most evidence suggests that Warlord was already going ahead anyway, and the New Gods had been established a few years prior by Jack Kirby, so it's unclear how much of an impact these issues had at all. In many ways, the first issue special series serves a similar purpose to series such as Showcase, a so-called tryout series that allowed for new characters to be introduced. First issue special, though, only allowed focus for a single issue, while Showcase would have runs of several issues. The series allows for some bizarre ideas, and nothing proves this more than the fourth issue, the debut appearance of Lady Cop. Yeah, DC legitimately tried to sell a series called Lady Cop. The whole shtick was, it's a lady, that's also a cop. And this issue is one of the strangest, greatest things I've ever seen, or read, or experienced in general. It was practically begging to have a video made about it, and how could I say no? After all, I do put out a new video every week, and eventually I'm going to run out of ideas. Not yet, of course, I've got plenty of videos planned down the line, and if you'd like to see them when they come out, then I highly suggest subscribing. Anywho, into the story. Scene in first issue special, issue number four, written by Robert Kaniger and with pencils by John Rosenberger. So, we start in Liza Warner's apartment, where her friends are getting murdered. Liza just barely escapes by hiding under the bed, and notices that the killer is wearing white cowboy boots. When the police ask her if she remembers anything, she's pretty much just able to tell them about the cowboy boots. No, I'm not a cop. But this feels pretty standard, right? I mean, white cowboy boots should be pretty easy to remember, and they're not going to be all that helpful in tracking this guy down, right? Well, the cop interviewing Liza is just blown away by Liza's incredible deductive skills, saying, Wish we had more women applying for the police academy. This city would be a safer place to live in. So, what does Liza do? Well, she completely uproots her life and applies to the academy. I mean, what else is she going to do? All her friends are dead now. Well, Liza shows herself to be a highly skilled potential officer, because she can do things like shoot a gun, and flip a person, and write on a piece of paper. Warner's real time to shine, though, comes during graduation. Things are going normally, until a disgruntled academy member who flunked out comes to blow the place up. He says he flunked out for being unfit, and now he's going to show them by blowing the place up. Well, Liza jumps from her seat and karate chops the guy right in the throat, catching the grenade in the process. Turns out it's already live, though, so she throws it in the trash. And somehow that doesn't end horribly. I guess this just proves we shouldn't litter, I guess. So this feels like a pretty full story. There's the origin, the call to action, the training montage. We have to be pretty far into the issue, right? Nope, this is just the first five pages. And look, I know a lot of modern comics are criticized for taking too long to get to the action. We live in an age where stories that warrant maybe three issues get about 12. So this kind of fast-paced storytelling might seem refreshing at first. But this pacing is just so... off. We're not wasting any time, that's for sure, but it's going way too fast. We as the readers can't get used to anything because there's just too much going on. Everything is changing. And as the issue goes on, that certainly doesn't get any better. So now Liza's a full-fledged police officer. That means the story can really start. It's just a normal summer day in some nondescript city, and Liza rushes up to the roof of a building to stop a mugging, or perhaps something worse that the comics code wouldn't let the writers explain. So Liza reprimands the guy, saying, Don't you realize you could have the book thrown at you? I feel like something along the lines of, Don't you realize you could go to prison would be more effective? But the book's good, too. Unfortunately, another guy comes up out of nowhere and grabs Liza's arms. Her shirt just magically starts to unbutton itself, and things aren't looking too good for our female officer of the law. The one guy says, watch me heat up the fuzz, 
which is just about as uncomfortable as I have ever been while reading a comic, and Liza responds with the oh-so-witty retort, my temperature is below freezing, and then I don't dig gorillas. Either! Unfortunately, in all the fuss, the victim got away, and Liza vows to find her, but not before one of the thugs actually refers to her as Lady Cop, so I guess they really were trying to push that as an actual name. There is Superman, and Batman, and Wonder Woman, and Lady Cop. Lady Cop continues down her beat and buys a young girl an ice cream cone. Then Liza gets possessed for a panel. I'm not entirely sure what's happening here. It's probably just an error, but in what way, I don't know. It seems like the penciler should have noticed this, but maybe he thought the inker was going to take care of the eyes. This isn't entirely implausible, as other artists have done similar things. For example, while he was drawing the superpowers tie-ins, Jack Kirby would often have either his inker or his assistant, Mark Evanier, drawing the logos. I also have to point out that the inks are by Vince Coletta, who was known for erasing stuff that came in pencils to make his job easier. I don't know if that's what happened here, but Coletta often had quite a bit of work on his plate at once, so even if it wasn't intentional, he could have just forgotten and something was lost in the printing process. Or maybe he did erase the original eyes to simplify them, but then got behind schedule. I don't know, it's all speculation. But regardless, we ended up with one really weird looking panel. So over the next few pages, Liza finds the girl from earlier, talking to someone on the phone. But she runs off before Lady Cop can catch up. Liza then stops a robbery and meets up with her fiancé. They head off to the beach for a midday excursion, and we get this absolute gem of a line. Liza, I'm tired of being kidded by my friends when I tell them you're a cop. Resign! But of course, she says no, and then they kiss. And she once again starts thinking about how she needs to find the guy who killed her friends. While making out with her fiancé. I'm not the only one that finds that weird, right? I feel like the writer kind of just forgot about this thread at a certain point, and then just brought it back up whenever he remembered. Either way, the fiancé really has to worry about being jealous about a bunch of dead people, which is actually kind of a running thread in comics, now that I think about it. Um, maybe we should just move on. The scene changes, and three days pass. Lady Cop finally finds the woman, although I can't really help but wonder why. Like, she spent three days looking, and I'm not really sure what the whole deal was there. Maybe she was needed for questioning, but after half a week, and with all the other charges that you can pin on the guys, you'd think the time would pass. At the very least, the police should have been able to learn her name, either from questioning the thugs, or using records, I mean, that's why they have the records, right? The woman is standing at the edge of the pier. Things are looking pretty dire. And this is when the whole book turns into a PSA about STIs. I'm not kidding. 17 pages into this 20-page comic, the whole story just takes a left turn into PSAville. And I don't even know what to say about it. I'll just leave this quote up for you to read and point out how Lady Cop obviously thinks that you can just arrest venereal disease like it's a common criminal. So Liza helps sort things out between the girl and her father, and the story is over. Or at least it should be, but then out of nowhere, a guy comes up and tries to kill Liza for putting his friends, the guys from earlier, in jail. So in an epic callback to the start of the book, Liza flips him into the water, and I think this book is actually convincing me to, at the very least, give it more credit than it deserves. Oh no. We leave Liza as she's once again thinking about her friend's killer, wondering if she'll ever find him. And does she? I don't know. After this, Lady Cop kind of disappeared from comics. As far as I can tell, the only time she's been back since this issue was in the all-new Adam series by Gail Simone and John Byrne, and even then, she didn't play a major role. Also, apparently she showed up a few times on Arrow, which is weird, but really she was an entirely different character that just used the name Liza Warner. She never even got to take on her nom de guerre of Lady Cop. This book is a lot of fun to pick on, and there's just so much to point out. Honestly, I suggest you read it because it's... I don't even know what it is, but I know I suggest it. It's one of those things that's clearly supposed to be feminism, but it's feminism as written by a middle-aged white guy in the 1970s, so it doesn't really work out. Maybe it is meant to be sexist. There's strangely not much of a difference between the two, honestly. The story's choppy, and the art's far from the best thing out there. Despite this, you can't be too tough on the writer and artist. 
The first issue special series is inherently problematic because you basically need a new concept for a series every month. And while there were some older characters like Metamorpho and the New Gods who were used, DC's writing staff were put on a pretty tough schedule to come up with new ideas. And Lady Cop was clearly birthed from that struggle. They were throwing everything at the wall to see what would stick, and this is what missed the wall entirely and instead went out the window. They always say there's no such thing as a bad character though, so maybe with the right writer, Lady Cop can become a true staple of DC. I don't believe that for a second, because her name is still Lady Cop, but you never know what someone might do with her. That's all for this week, so I'll just go ahead and leave it up to you whether or not you'd like to subscribe and all that. I'm trying to make it up to 200 subscribers by the end of June, so it'd be great if you did, but I mean, I'm not picky. I've got new videos every week, so if that's your thing, then I'd love to see you again. Uh, and that's all. Have a great day, and goodbye everybody.